Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to walk through how to dual boot Windows and Kali Linux. In this video, I'm using Windows 10. However, the steps are exactly the same for Windows 11 and even Windows 8. This video is also for UEFI slash GPT systems. So first, let's go ahead and check if your computer is booting in UEFI BIOS mode or not. So you can search for system information and under BIOS mode, if you see UEFI, you are good to go. Now let's go ahead and unallocate some space where we will be installing Kali Linux. So right click on the Windows icon on the bottom left, come to disk management. And once this loads up, you will see all the partitions on your disk. So the first one is a 100 meg UEFI system partition. We call it the EFI system partition. This is where the Windows bootloader is. This is also where we will be installing the Kali bootloader. We have our Windows C drive, our Windows D drive and a recovery partition of Windows. Now, uh, this method is not going to uh, affect your data in any way. However, I really recommend that you go ahead and back up data in your D drive. All right. With that being said, go ahead and right click on your D drive, shrink volume and from your D drive, we will be unallocating some space. So for the purposes of this video, I will be unallocating 100 GB space. So I'm going to type in 102400 and then go ahead and click on shrink and this will unallocate 100 gigs for me. Now, if you didn't understand what I did, I basically multiplied 100 by 1024. So let's say if you want to unallocate just 50 gigs, what you can do is go ahead and type in 50 into 1024 and that is the amount that you want to put in right there. All right, now that we have our space unallocated, let's go ahead and grab the ISO. So you can go ahead and go to Kali.org. I'll put the links in the description click on download which will lead you to this page and there's a bunch of options here that you can see uh, the one that we are going to go ahead and download is the installer image if you're trying on virtual box etc you can go ahead and grab these ones but we can go ahead and click on installer image obviously we are running on 64 bit so you can go ahead and click on this icon here that will have the iso image downloaded as you can see over here and also you want to go ahead uh, to rufus.ie again links will be in the description download the latest version of rufus and i've already done that over here with that being said uh, just go ahead and click on Rufus and then it says do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device click on yes and then we have Rufus up and running now at this point I want to insert a USB device which should be minimum 8 GB in space and you want to back up all of the data in the USB device uh, this is where we will be making our Kali Linux bootable USB so go ahead and grab your device and insert it into your computer right now I'll be doing it right now as well So as you can see, uh, Rufus has detected my USB device. What do I want to do is go ahead and click on select and then click my ISO file, which is Kali Linux. This one is the right one. And then once it's done, you can go ahead and click on start and says Rufus says, basically, do you want to create this image in ISO mode? Go ahead and click on OK. And then Rufus wants to download some files from the Internet. Go ahead and click on yes. And then it warns you again that all of the data on your USB device is going to be wiped off. So if you haven't backed up, you should really do it. Once you're clear with that, go ahead and click on OK. All right. So as you can see, we are done with making our bootable USB. All we have to do right now is go ahead and restart our computer. And once you see your manufacturer's logo, you want to press one of the function keys that matches with your laptop or your desktop motherboard manufacturer and then enter your device boot menu. Over here, you can see that there are two options. You have obviously your Windows boot manager and also your USB device, which in my case is SanDisk. So whatever is your USB device brand, you will see UEFI uh, and that name. So I'm going to make sure with my arrow keys that option is selected and then press enter to boot up into Kali Linux. Now the first option here is graphical install and that is what we need. So go ahead and press enter again and Kali Linux will start booting the Debian installer for us. So all right, there we have it. This is the Debian installer and it is basically asking us for the language of installation that we want. So we want to proceed in English. I'm going to go ahead and click on continue and then it's going to ask me to select my location. I can go ahead and select any location. Let's go ahead and do UK. Click on continue. 
uh, I want to configure my keyboard layout now I use the American keyboard layout because I'm from India so I'm going to go ahead and click on OK if you are using the British keyboard you can go ahead and do that all right go ahead and click on continue and then now it's going to detect our installation media all right so now uh, it's trying to connect to Wi-Fi if you have cable or you have ethernet for example this thing shouldn't pop up but since my desktop has wi-fi uh, we need to go ahead and fix this so what this is basically is that under the rtl wi-fi uh, repository of debian uh, there the, the installer basically needs something called the rtl 88812aefw.bin so what you want to do is go ahead to the debian website uh, link will be in the description and download your firmware now this is obviously not going to be the same for you if you have another card uh, so whatever is showing up over here you want to go ahead and type it in exactly on your computer um, maybe in another computer and then go ahead and copy paste that firmware file into a usb device so i have that already set up so let me go ahead and plug that usb device in and then i'm going to make sure i have yes selected and go ahead and click on continue so the installer basically uh, found multiple interfaces. So ETH0 is basically the cable Ethernet and WLAN0 is Wi-Fi. So I have a Realtek uh, chip on this desktop. So I'm going to go ahead with Wi-Fi. And now you'll be prompted to connect to your Wi-Fi. So I have the first one is my Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go ahead and click on continue and then most of you will have a password so the second option is what should be selected click on continue and then type in your passphrase for the said wi-fi and if it's right the installer will attempt to connect and then grant you access all right so it uh, succeeded in connecting to the wi-fi now it's going to configure the network all right so now this is going to ask for our host name so we basically have username at host name that is the nomenclature so i'm just going to call this let's say kali and i'm going to go ahead and click on continue now it's going to ask for a domain name uh, i do not have a domain name so we can go ahead and keep this blank uh, this is also something that you can set up later so keep it blank and go ahead and click on continue now I want to type in my full name so demon killer for example and then this will also prompt us for our username so uh, it's going to be demon killer and now since we set our host name as Kali uh, on when I open a terminal it will be demon killer at Kali all right so click on continue now we need to set up a strong password so I've set up a password for myself go ahead and click on continue and now Kali is going to set up the clock from if you obviously have internet connected and now we are here in the most important part that is partitioning our disks so Kali is going to set up the partitioner so we have a bunch of options basically over here to partition our disk the first one is to use the largest continuous free space that we basically unallocated in windows and this is going to be an automated process uh, the second option is to basically wipe off windows which we do not want to do that and then the uh, third and fourth option are basically to set up LVM which is going to be out of the scope of this video it will make the video more complex so we are going to skip this now the first option is ideal however I really wanted to show you what is going on under the hood and the manual process of how to partition your disk so that if in case anything goes wrong you know what is going wrong so let's go ahead and uh, select manual go ahead and click on continue and then we can see uh, all of our partition table over here so our 100 megs of EFI system partition is here we can go ahead and check it out uh, we want to make sure that bootable flag is set on on all right and then it's going to be used as EFI system partition once you have that out of the way go ahead and click on uh, done setting up the partition click on continue and then you see your free space over here the 100 gigs that you unallocated in windows and that this is where we are going to be creating three partitions all right so go ahead and click on continue and then we are going to go ahead and uh, create a new partition and let's say i'm going to allocate uh, around 50 gigs uh, for the root partition so let me just go ahead and create that first and then explain what i'm doing here so 50.4 gigs um, roughly 50 is the root partition go ahead and click on continue uh, the 
location is going to be beginning uh, click on continue and then you can see that the mount point is automatically set to root which is correct and then we can keep everything else as default all right we want to use the xt4 file system if you want to use something else uh, there are a bunch of options here but for the purposes of this video we'll stick to ext4 it's a modern file system and it does the job pretty well all right so we are going to go ahead and click on done setting up the partition and what we want to do is also go ahead and create something called swap so so swap is basically like virtual memory uh, whenever you have a memory intensive application that might potentially go ahead and utilize all of your physical RAM present on your computer. Your virtual memory is basically the set of space on your disk that will be added to your memory that will allow your total extended memory to be increased to what you have physically installed on your computer. So what swap obviously is going to be slower than your physical memory because it's going to be created on your disk however it's really really uh, useful when you want to do things like hibernating your computer so that is the reason why we are going to be creating swap so create a new partition swap basically can be the amount uh, equal to the amount of uh, space that you have on your uh, amount of memory that you have on your computer so in this computer i have 8 gigs of ram so i'm going to set up 8 all right uh, so 8 gigs is fine for my swap going to go ahead and click on continue and then this is going to be at the end of the space click on continue and we are going to use this uh, as swap area so come down click on swap area click on continue and then we are done setting setting up the partition all right uh, now when we uh, chose to create the partition at the end of the space it basically got created literally at the end of the space while when we chose to create at the beginning of the space it was created at the beginning of the space so now we have 49 gigs left we can go ahead and create what we call the home partition and Kali Linux installer the Debian installer will go ahead and set that up automatically for us go ahead and click on done setting up the partition and let's quickly go ahead and recap what we are doing so we created three partition in the 100 gigs that we had unallocated in windows the first one is the root partition you can consider this like your c drive in windows not exactly obviously but this is where all the system files are going to be so the linux file system and all the packages that you install are going to be here in the root partition your home is your personal partition where you store your photos videos audio files documents etc and then swap is your virtual memory now grub our bootloader is going to be installed in the 100 megs efi system partition alongside windows uh, boot manager so that is set as it is all right so now we are done with partitioning we can go ahead and come to finish partitioning and write changes to the disk and it's going to give us a summary of what we are doing go ahead and click on yes click on continue and debian installer is going to go ahead and partition the disk all right, so Debian installer is going to be installing the base system. All right, so we have an option to now go ahead and install our graphical user interface. And we have a bunch of options here. The first one is basically XFCE, which is Kali Linux's default desktop environment. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to stick to XFCE. If you have time and space, you can go ahead and install GNOME and Plasma as well. This is going to obviously install extra packages. Uh, you can also go ahead and install the collection of tools, which is basically all of the pen testing tools that Kali Linux has uh, to provide. If you do not select this right now, you can obviously go ahead and install it after the installation. So I'm going to deselect them. Uh, definitely you want to uh, check these if you are planning to dual boot Kali for pen testing purposes. So with all of your selections uh, set up, go ahead and click on continue. And it's going to take some time to install all of the packages. So with just uh, XFCE, it's going to install uh, 116 packages, 100, um, 1116 packages. But when you install all of the pen testing tools, it goes above 2000, 2500. So with that being said, uh, this is going to take some time. All right, so we are done installing our base system. We are done installing our graphical user interface. And now it's time to install our bootloader which is grub all right so we are done with the installation remove all of your usb devices that you might have plugged in and go ahead and click on continue all right so we should boot up into kali's grub and we have 
the option to boot into Kali Linux and we also have the option to boot into Windows. So let's go ahead and boot into Kali Linux. Alright, so we are in light DM and let's go ahead and type in our username and type in our password and log in. And that's pretty much it. We have logged in into Kali Linux. You can see that we have Wi-Fi working out of the box. We also have our username and hostname set up. Let me go and quickly open the terminal. So you can see we have demon killer at Kali. Let me make this bigger so you can see it. And this is ZSH and uh, the desktop environment is XFCE. And you can go ahead and use Kali Linux as it is. So there it is guys. This is how we dual boot Windows and Kali Linux. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And also let me know in the comment section what else do you want to watch in the future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a nice day.